For this, you're going to need a knife, the enclosure box, which links are down below, a couple of screws, I bought these from Home Depot, and then I have these straps right here, the size are 3 4 inch. Now these straps here, they're in the same aisle that we get the conduit from, the electrical aisle in Home Depot. So if you see this conduit right here, this metal pipe, it is right next to this. And then lastly, you're just gonna need a drill. And if you want, you can also add in this caulk. This is super effective in keeping the moisture and insects and any water out of your enclosure. I definitely didn't go over this correctly on the universal setup video that I just uh, attached right here. And uh, somebody asked me, but how do I actually strap it down to the enclosure, which is a really good question. It was honestly my fault. I didn't go over it well enough. So uh, let's go over this, right? Like just real quick, listen. If you're not going to get this one that I have down below, totally okay. Just make sure that it has a gasket, all right? Because I don't know how other hotspots work. Maybe this isn't the best uh, orientation for you, depending on the box. At the end of the day, what you want to make sure with your enclosure is that it's watertight. Here's the mount that slides off of the bobcat. We're going to need to drill this down into the enclosure first. Now, I'll go over this in a universal video, and we talk about how you need to keep the alignment perfect as far as where the cables are going to enter. So for a bobcat, I put it slightly off towards the left. Therefore, that this cable can run imperfectly without having any bend or on the connection point of the hotspot. This is not the actual enclosure guys. This is uh, just one size smaller because I messed up and I ordered the wrong one. So I do have the appropriate link down below. This will not work out for you. It will mess up your mind. Now, when you drill this in, you can see that I'm drilling in at the top and at the bottom. So if you flip this over on the back of your enclosure, you're going to have uh, two little screws coming out like this. Now I'll point this out because a lot of times people would want to put the pole down first before the actual enclosure and it really just messes you up. Put the mount first and then we're going to put the pole on the back. Now the enclosure, it has uh, these little rubber gasket kind of things. I make a little cross and just cut right through. But you can also just take this and just cut right cut one of these little sections off. Although it is slightly big, so I would be careful on doing that. Me personally, what I do is I just cut a little slice right in the middle. Okay, so I made a little slit in it just like this. Now I do this both ways sometimes. First, I slide the ethernet. Super important you slide ethernet first. And then I'll go ahead and slide in the LMR 400 cable. Once you get it through, just push it all the way. So as you can tell, you don't need to cut off everything. All right, this is where the fun begins. First things first, guys, make sure you connect the cable uh, then we're gonna clamp this down right here just like I do in universal video so you can see that right there we're not gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about this part right and so the idea is once that's clamped down and guys I'm gonna use this as a metal pole so if you guys can really just bear with me I don't have that metal conduit right now because I just ran out because I'll put them on all my hotspots, but we're gonna be using this right here. Some of you guys might have a pole that's a little bit different size if you don't get it from Home Depot. I'm gonna explain to you what hiccups you're gonna run into. What's most important is creating the pressure with this on here to then make it stay. Because if not, you're gonna get this thing to just swing around. And this is why I need to talk about this. You need to make sure you get the right size. With what I show you from Home Depot, in that aisle, with that conduit, with three fourths inch strap, works perfectly. If you uh, get something different, then look, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure that this is smaller than the pole. It sounds counterintuitive, but let me explain. So if I get this antenna, notice how um, I'm gonna have to push this down like this, right? And then look how, look how like clearly it's too small for this pole, but that's exactly what we need because now I can drill this down here. When I screw it in, it's going to create pressure, right? And let me show you. Now again, I'm not going to be screwing this thing down. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes of the pressure we need to create. This is replacing right now the metal pole that we're using. I would never screw it onto here because for one, I want to make sure that I utilizing all the antenna, right? So that's why I put it on the pole. And the pole obviously just makes you go higher. So screw this in. Now once it's in, like make sure it's tight, but don't overdo it. Don't just sit here and like let this thing spin because it's plastic guys, it's not metal. So it will carve out all the plastic and then you'll kind of just be screwed. You'll have to start over. And this is the part that's most important. See how clearly it's too small? But that's what we need because once we screw this down, it makes pressure, right? And then this will not move at all. There we go. You see that? You see how this is just on there now? I can pick this up and this will not go anywhere. Okay? Even with the bobcat inside and the weight on it, it's not going anywhere. Lastly, just put this over here, recreate the situation like you just did it, and then you're good to go. Right? That is how this here, and this is going to be the end result like this. You got the cable coming in. Of course, remember guys, this is not going to be here. This is way up here. I'm using this for a replacement of the pole. Key points though, remember, Put the cable and the antenna on first, then attach the antenna to the end of your pole like I do in the video. Make sure and watch that. 
and then put the pole onto the enclosure. The reason being is because once you connect this cable and, and uh, you know plug it into the bottom of the enclosure, the placement of this pole along these straps is all going to depend on this length of the cable. If you have a way longer cable, then of course you're gonna put, you're gonna be putting this way down here compared to the you know, closer up here to the top. And then remember, put the caulk at the end and between every screw and every opening that you have in the enclosure. And then this is what the final result looks like. Um, these clamps are a little bit big on this one, but just get the general idea. There's the enclosure box and then you have the pole and the antenna strapped together like this. It's also worth mentioning that these screws, if they're too big, if they're too long, this will not work. So you have to uh, make sure that these are small and short like this, right? So anyways, that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.